Hello everybody, um, this is my first YouTube video and uh, I just wanted to thank BioNerd23 for all the hard effort and all the time to post all the awesome amazing videos on radioactivity and uh, this especially goes out to her because she really put a lot of time and effort into her videos and they're, they're awesome, awesome videos. She and uh, she's a very very intelligent young woman who obviously loves things uh, loves life you know and I of course I'm the same way I love to experiment with a lot of different things and uh, uh, radioactivity is one of them and uh, I'm gonna show you uh, something uh, this is probably one of the best things I have in my radioactive collection, although I could show you something else, but I figured all would probably like this one. Um, inside the box, uh, no one sees what's in the box. Not yet. You'll get to see it, but not yet. In another video, I'll bring out everything. But, right now, I'm going to pull just one thing out of the box. And you will find this interesting, I hope. And let me put the box away. There we go. And uh, this is what it is. This here, right here. This is an old MI, uh, M1C helmet. Uh, luminous disc that they would use and put in their uh, netting of the helmets. They'd also nail them to the decks too. That way they would know where they were going in the dark. And these, this one was used in D-Day as far as I know. And they, they used these in World War II. And uh, they did use other ones that contained strontium-90 as well. Up to about two millicuries which is a lot of radioactivity. But uh, we all know that strontium-90 has a half-life of about... Mm, has a half-life of about 28 years. That's where radium has a half-life of about uh, 1,602 years. And strontium-90 is uh, mainly a beta emitter. And uh, a beta and gamma emitter. Well, this one is... Uh, mainly an alpha emitter although it does of course it's decay products of course uh, radium 226 being the most abundant and uh, it decays by alpha and a radon 222 and right here's the decay chain there I do the same thing like Bioner does I write things down it really does help uh, radium 226 is in the decay chain and right here and it's the element uh, uh, uranium 238 decays to thorium 234 by alpha thorium 234 beta minus to protactinium 234 and that decays by beta minus and decays to uranium 234 which decays by alpha or spontaneous fission the thorium 230 decays by alpha to radium 226 and radium 226 decays to radon 222 and a real easy way to understand alpha decay is or any decay for that matter is for example what element is uranium well it's 92 well if it decays by alpha it will drop by it'll always drop by two element numbers and it will always drop by four nucleon numbers, protons and neutrons. So 238, 234, 92, 90. Same thing with, say, this one here. 230, subtract 4, 226, 90, drop two elements, 88. Well, that's a good way to look at it. And uh, it eventually. Uh, decays it goes through many different decay modes for example and uh, decays to lead to a six which is stable and uh, now I'm gonna show you the helmet marker and this is very very radioactive it's it goes up to uh, it's gone up to about one millisievert before and we're gonna use a therapy dosimeter this is the best dosimeter I have I do have a CDV right here which is uh, 
which uh, is quite a good Geiger counter, but uh, we're going to use the Terra P because it'll be a little bit easier in this video and also I uh, I uh, prefer to use this one, it's a little bit easier. Alright, first it comes with a carrying strap which is, comes in real useful. It's great for prospecting if you want to carry it with you. And turn it on. If it goes above 30 it will go off and it'll sound like this. The annoying little alarm will go off. We don't want that in the video. We don't want that in the video so what we do hit hold threshold hit mode and use threshold to select and we're going to set it to zero. Use mode. Okay. And we want to get a better reading so Here's the battery case, two AAA, uh, two AAA batteries. And we're going to take off the protective case and uh, expose the GM tube, which has got a plastic over it to protect it from moisture. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the Luminous M1C helmet marker, shall we? Okay, about 900, about 917 was the highest reading we got there, even though I have got it to go up above one millisievert. Um, let's go ahead and hold down mode and turn it off. See, there's the gamma dose right here. We were, what we were reading was gamma dose rate, gamma dose, and of course we have the time and the alarm clock. And that, that comes in handy too when you have that dosimeter like that. Now let's put the cover back on, put this away. Now let's take a look at it under ultraviolet light. Okay. Sorry. I'm going to turn the fan off. I don't want that buzzing in the background. Alright, I'm sorry about that. Okay. It glows very, very bright green under ultraviolet. Let's move it away. Let's move it up close. Get a closer look at it. Sorry I don't have the best camera but hopefully I will soon. Hopefully I'll get a Gamma Scout. That's a good dose of meter. And that's an old luminous disc that they used for helmets and to mark different area locations in World War II. And it is very radioactive as it contains radium and zinc sulfide, which is a... It's a they used that as a paint back then. I actually have more radium-containing products, and I have many other radioactive materials. And I really hope that you will look forward to my other videos that I have. And I really want to give my thanks again to BioNerd23 for all the hard work and effort for the videos you made. They are awesome. And I just want to know uh, uh, if you know the safeties and, you know, it's very safe to have these. And I hope you all enjoyed this. And stay tuned. Thank you and good night.